case on this morning's docket, case number 114097 in the matter of Timothy Clark Meyer. This is the case where we have a recusal uh, sitting for Justice Beyer on my left is uh, the Chief Judge of the Kansas Court of Appeals, the Honorable Tom Malone. He's read all the materials. He'll be fully participating in our arguments and also the ultimate resolution of the case at conference this afternoon. Chief Judge Malone, on behalf of my colleague in the Supreme Court, thank you for helping us out today. You're welcome. Good. Counsel, before you proceed, I wanted to make one last call for the respondent. Is Timothy Clark Meyer in the courtroom? I see no response. Thank you, counsel. You may proceed. May it please the court, Stan Haslett, appearing from the Disciplinary Administrator's Office. Uh, in this case, I filed a notice to the court that I'm uh, appearing, uh, substituting for Mr. Walzak, who retired after he appeared before the panel in this case. Uh, the actual hearing occurred on March 24th of 2015. With respect to the respondent's non-appearance today, I'd like to address that, that issue first. Uh, the clerk's office actually sent out three letters to the respondent at, at three different addresses notifying him of this, this hearing today. Um, and two of the, by certified mail, and two of those were signed for. Um, one of them was the address that he had last given to the clerk of the appellate courts. And the respondent did file an answer in this case, um, but he did not appear at the panel hearing. And in that answer, he gave he gave an address, and the clerk also sent the notice of this hearing today to that address, and that was accepted, signed for, the certified letter was signed for. In addition to that, um, I had Mr. Delaney of our office uh, try to contact the respondent earlier this week, and on Monday, he was able to establish contact by email, and um, Mr. Delaney said to Mr. Meyer, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of the hearing before the Kansas Supreme Court on October 29th of 2015 at 9 a.m. Uh, could you advise us whether you're going to appear today or that day? And the response was, Bill, <clears throat> I will not be able to attend the hearing on 10 15 but I have no objection to the recommendation contained in the hearing report of indefinite suspension. And that's, uh, that's what the hearing panel recommended our, our our recommendation is indefinite or is disbarment. Uh, reading from the letter that was sent to uh, the respondent by the clerk's office, it says the respondent in a disciplinary action is required to appear before the Kansas Supreme Court even if no exceptions have been taken to the final hearing report, which is the situation we have here. And that's, that's the wording in Supreme Court Rule 212D, which mandates that the respondent appear at these hearings. Um, so there's, there is absolutely no question uh, that the respondent knew what was going on today. Counsel, if anybody on the court wondered whether this was, in fact, a correct email exchange, Mr. Delaney's in the courtroom. Is that correct? That's correct, he is. Very good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the misconduct in this case is the respondent's multiple convictions for DWI. Uh, four, to be exact. 2001, 2008, 2010, 2012. 2012, um, actually the first conviction occurred in Kansas, the last three uh, occurred in Wisconsin, where he has been since 2004. Um, the last conviction in 2012 under Wisconsin law was a felony conviction. Uh, it's clear that the respondent has had a long time addiction to, to alcohol. Um, in evidence at the hearing, but not considered in assessing the discipline, was the fact that prior to, he was, prior to the time he was admitted to practice in Kansas, he had three EWI convictions then, so we, we have a really, uh, prior to his admission, so we really have a total of seven. Um, he, the panel found that, that this criminal activity violated 8.4 B, D, and G. Um, some additional factors for the court's consideration. <clears throat> the respondent actually, uh, in his answer, indicated that in clear back in 2003, in November of 2003, he shut down his practice in Kansas uh, he was administratively suspended by the Kansas Supreme Court in 2004, September of 2004. And to our knowledge, he has not even been in the state of Kansas since 2004. Um, the recommendation of the hearing panel, as I stated earlier, was indefinite suspension. Our office recommended disbarment. Uh, that recommendation was made because of the ex extensive criminal misconduct here of uh, the four DWI convictions. Um, 
We have a little more information about these DWI convictions than we normally do. If you read the panel report, uh, you see what his blood alcohol content was during the last three convictions, 0 .200, 0 .232, 0 .294. Obviously, um, very serious situation driving under that, that sort of alcohol consumption. And in the panel report, it is also stated that uh, at the felony conviction uh, sentencing, the respondent appeared um, intoxicated. Um, <clears throat> he, that along with the really kind of in and out participation in this case, I mean, filing an answer and, and to the formal complaint, but then not appearing at the hearing, when he obviously had notice of that hearing and his failure to appear here today, uh, led our office to recommend disbarment. And, Council, if I could interrupt, sure. the, the panel relied upon standard 5.12 to recommend the indefinite suspension. You're asking for disbarment. Is there another standard you're relying upon that no. says these are the grounds for disbarment, or you're simply looking that at the suspension standard saying we have more serious circumstances? Right, more serious circumstances. That's correct, Your Honor. And I, I want to make a distinction between some previous cases that this court has considered where you have indefinitely suspended or suspended for two years an attorney who has been convicted of a felony. Um, Joseph Laskowski in 2006, the, <clears throat> the discipline was indefinite suspension. Thomas O'Neill in 2007, the discipline was indefinite suspension. Jeffrey Johns in 2010 was a s suspension for two years. But I believe there's a major distinction between those cases and this case, and that is that the respondents in each one of those cases participated in the dis disciplinary process, and they presented testimony to the hearing panel about what they had done to address the alcohol problem, <clears throat> excuse me, that they had. That is totally absent here. And of course, when, when the panel in this case made the recommendation of indefinite suspension, they obviously could not have been aware of the fact that, that he was not going to appear here today in spite of having notice uh, of that. So we really have no idea, uh, as we did in the previous cases, what the respondent has done to address these problems. Um, and for that reason, I believe that this case can be distinguished from the prior cases where you've considered felony DWI convictions of Kansas lawyers. Uh, and to me, that justifies the recommendation of disbarment. In addition, uh, in June of 2015 of this year in the N. Ray Barker case, um, this court said that the failure to appear at this hearing, uh, which is required by the Supreme Court rules, is an aggravating factor. Um, and so I would ask the court to take that into consideration as well. Any further presentation? No, sir. We have any questions of counsel? One last remark I would make. Uh, before you sit down, Mr. Meyer has not yet appeared. Is that correct? Do you know Mr. Meyer by sight, or is it Mr. Delaney? Okay. In any event, nobody answering to that name is appearing. All right. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you. Court will take this matter under advisement.